Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, so tonight I have, I guess it's, it's sort of the second part of the video I was working on earlier. This is the new all-in-one kit from AliExpress here. I ordered two kits actually and I already got the first one installed in my Game Boy Pocket here. And you can check out the link to the video. I'll, I'll post it in the description there. Um, if you want to see like the packaging and everything, how this came, uh, that's all in this video here. But I mean, it's already unboxed, so I can't really do that again. But I do have here a nice Game Boy Color. We can get that set up. Uh, this is a perfectly stock Game Boy Color. No mods in this. I, um, I've already been inside now to this thing because I wanted to clean it up. And uh, I actually put off this video because I wanted to do this mod in this particular Game Boy. Uh, one of my buddies sent this to me, and I, it was a super thoughtful gift. It's something that I've been looking for for a while. Believe it or not, these are kind of hard to find in my area for a reasonable price. But anyway, that's besides the point. Got the kit here. Um, I do already have it. I have like the original version of the kit, I guess, set up in another Game Boy Color, and if I was a forward-thinking individual, I would have that Game Boy Color at my desk right now, but I do not. So, I'll get that later. But here's what it comes with. You get the uh, converter board itself. This is the PCB that makes the magic happen here. Uh, it, it didn't come with an extra ribbon cable. That's from my other kit. I forgot to take that out of there. Um, so this is what you get. You get the converter board itself, and of course they've etched off all the markings on the big uh, CPLD here, but it's not etched off on my other version, so I mean, I suppose I could just wink, wink, nudge, nudge that. Uh, board's labeled AIL underscore VO2. I don't know if that's like a translation thing or what, because I was told this is the AIO as an all-in-one kit, or maybe that's some other code, or I, I don't know. But either way... Here's the PCB you get. You also get this adhesive sticker, clear thing that I'll, I'll show you what that goes to in just a second here. You get the LCD itself, and I'm not gonna open that yet just because I don't wanna get my fingerprints all over it. And the particular kit I ordered also came with a lens here. Um, not all kits come with lenses. I think a lot of them are doing that now. This one in particular, it says Game Boy Color Light, and the bezel is adjusted appropriately for the smaller size screen. You can see how it kind of comes in from the sides and from the top. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Nice thing about this kit in particular is that there is zero soldering and zero modification required. Uh, just literally drop it in. Um, it's going to take me a little bit longer than it'll probably take you to install it because I want I want to run some tests. I'm I'm a naturally curious individual. I got to see how much power this thing uses. And um, I did already, like I said, I did already take this thing apart, clean it up, etc., etc. Uh, I ended up recapping this Game Boy Color because the caps were going bad and I had to put a new speaker in it. The old one was still working fine, but it's on its way out. I mean, well, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to throw it out because it does, like I said, it does still work, but I'm cautious. I don't know why I flipped that over. I'm going to flip this side over. I just want to set these screws aside so I don't lose them. Alright. So take your power switch, your IR window. And yeah, there's my new speaker. But just random tangent, if your speaker looks like this, where there's like this brown crud, it looks like it's rusting or something, that's uh, that's indicative. That means that the capac the electrolytic capacitors in your Game Boy are going bad. It means it's time to replace them. You can just throw another speaker in it, but the same thing will happen to the next speaker as well, and eventually it'll stop working. 
It'll sound worse and worse until it doesn't work at all. But I've already I've already taken care of this Game Boy, so I don't have to worry about that today at least. Take those three Phillips screws out, and then you can undo this bail. It just goes up both sides towards the top. You can use a plastic spudger. I usually just use my uh, fingernails there. And then you can flip this motherboard up and then pull it out. And then you're left with just the screen here. The easiest way to pop this out is to give this thing a physical twist. And mine's coming out really easy because, like I said, I've had this thing apart before. Um, but it, you'll you'll usually have to you know give it a real good go, and then it'll pop, and you can you know get your finger under with the corner that pops up, and then kind of pry it up from there. It's not nearly as delicate as you might think. You're not going to break it, and even if you do, you're backlighting your Game Boy. You don't need this anyhow. Pop that out, set it aside, and. At this point, if you're using the new lens, it's a good idea to pop out the original lens. You can just push it out from the inside. It's just so much easier to remove the lens from the inside rather than from the outside. Before I get to installing the actual kit, though, I want to run some quick tests. Get my power supply here. Just We'll get a baseline and then we'll plug in a game and then we'll get some values from that. So this Game Boy baseline at about 2.4 volts pulls about 50 milliamps. And we'll pop in my Pokemon Silver cartridge here. And I normally do my tests at the menu there, so at the menu it's pulling 65, 66 milliamps. About. But that's it. That's all I want to test. And I'll come back to that in a minute, you'll see why. Or I could just explain it as I'm taking this back apart. Um, the reason I test that is so that I could see what sort of battery life to expect out of the mod. You, know, you can see how much the power usage increases or whatnot. How did I lose the screen? I just had it. Uh, I put the Game Boy on top, that's how. Okay. So, here's your LCD here. Uh, there is no... Some of these kits do come with like a little plastic film on it. This one didn't. Uh, I don't think any of... Okay, I said some of these kits. I mean some of the kits that use this LCD. For example, McWill or Freckle Shack. Uh, but I don't think any of these all-in-one kits actually have a film on the LCD. I haven't had one on mine, but who knows. This uh, yellow card here with the clear adhesive sticker on it. The purpose of this, you're supposed to stick this on the back of your LCD here to provide some insulation because this is just bare metal. You don't want to short anything out. And it is slightly oversized so you don't have to get it perfectly lined up. I'm just a wee bit of a perfectionist. stuff like that. All right. And then drop the screen in here. You're supposed to line up the top, roughly center it, but there is an easier way and I will show you in just a second. Um, but if you've got that in there and if you leave the adhesive on um, in the shell sometimes it comes out with the screen it didn't in my case it's still in the shell your uh, LCD will stay in there just fine if you're having trouble getting it centered as well you can peel off I'm not gonna do mine just yet but you can peel off the center before peeling out the rest and then just hold that over there 
and you know just keep moving the LCD around until you got it in a good spot. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for just a moment. Um, I actually do have spacers that I can use and like I said if I was a forward-thinking man I probably would have had that stuff ready so I will be back in just a minute. Right, my apologies. Uh, normally I like to do these videos with just what they come with and then, you know, mix it up, do my kind of stuff later. Uh, but some of these kits do come with spacers, so I want to show the install with spacers. And mostly I just don't want to have to take it apart again. Um, but my particular kit did not come with spacers, and I don't really care that much because I already made my own spacers a while back. Uh, I got these PCB ones uh, that I had made specifically through Osh Park. Uh, they have some electrical circuit on the back. It really does not matter at all. You don't have to do anything with that. I just put it on there because I wasn't sure if Osh Park would let me make PCBs without a copper layer. Um, and on, on the other side, it just has my name and it says for use with all in one B1 Game Boy Color Kit. Obviously that text is not completely accurate because this is the B2 kit. But anyway, you just put the skinny one in on this side here and then the thick one in on this side here and my screen isn't centered so it doesn't want to go in there we go and if you get these spacers from Osh Park you'll probably have to sit there for a few minutes and file them down there's some rough edges, okay. but like I said, you want it lined up with the top, spacer on the left, spacer on the right, Bob Gianti. Next, we'll get this thing here, and the LCD goes into this connector right here. You've got to fold that up. And make sure the two line, the two white lines are facing towards you. And once that is all the way inserted, I said once that is all the way inserted, come on. There we go. Put that bale home. And you're good to go. I'm going to fold that that way. And this will sort of live in between the, uh, in, in the cutout for the LCD. It's designed to fit in there pretty nicely. Take your screen, just pop it in here, or screen, I'm sorry. It's one of those days. Motherboard. Pop it in there. And screen itself connects up. Just got to fold that cable up. easier to connect this beforehand, I'm not sure. All I know is this isn't the V1 kit where you have to like what feels like put all your force into it and just to get the stupid thing to bend. It actually bends pretty easily. It doesn't feel like you're gonna completely destroy it. Alright, once that's in, finish screwing down your motherboard, put your IR window in. And you might have to fold this thing. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. It should sit flat up against the IR window. And there you go. Just put the rest of your screws in, put the back cover on. Make sure you put your power switch in, 
put it together and you're all done. Um, before I do that though, I want to test and see what kind of power consumption this thing is going to give us. Good, that's still at 2.4. Boot it up, you can see it's pulling about 100, which, what was it at, 90 or 50-ish? So it's basically doubling the power consumption, which would effectively half your battery life. And you can adjust the brightness by tapping on the IR window, which is easier when you've got the thing completely assembled. It goes through a few steps there, and then the last one should be off. And the screen itself is still on, but because it's a transflective display, you can still see it as long as you got enough light. Anyway, it'll save you some power. Not great in the long run, but better than nothing. Let's try it out with the game here. And on the menu, it's at about 116, 117 milliamps at 2.4 volts there. Not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. All right. Still got a few more tests ahead. A few more mods I got planned. But I mean, if you just wanted to install the kit and move on, that's pretty much it. Last step would be to install the lens. I suppose I can do that now before I get fingerprints all over this thing. Should just drop right in there. And there you go. All right. But if you guys are like me, you probably want a little bit more or maybe you just don't like having that um, sensor in the IR window and quite frankly I don't I mean I don't really use the IR functionality a lot but I mean I, I like having the option I guess I do have a Pokemon Pikachu too and I do have Pokemon Silver and I am you know, I, I do use the two together, so it would be nice to be able to use it with this Game Boy. So what I'm going to do, on the pocket, I just left the extra sensor. You know, who cares? We have two sensors. But on this Game Boy, I'm going to remove it entirely. And we're actually going to do two things here. Let me get my soldering iron heated up. some copper tape here. We're going to make another sensor. So the touch sensor, as it, as it were, um, it's really not too complicated as far as the electronics go. It's literally just, or at least in the old, the V1 kits, literally just a piece of copper tape soldered to a regular wire that you tape on wherever you want. So that's what I'm going to do again. some wire I'm gonna I'm gonna do my new thing here and put it right under the uh, Nintendo logo so that's gonna need to go up and around I might as well route it this way that should be plenty All right, 
So as far as soldering to this thing, it's literally just a piece of copper tape. And you want to solder to it before you put it in the shell because you might melt the shell. In fact, soldering on top of this Game Boy is probably not the best idea. Whatever, I'll just flip it over and solder on that part. Just get some solder on there. And then just stick your wire in there. And there you go. Next, I'm going to do the same thing I did on my Game Boy Pocket kit. Now, I didn't really notice a difference in that kit. Um, I don't know, maybe I wasn't looking hard enough. But I think this time it'll be a little bit easier because I have another console I can compare it with side by side. But there are these two pads here. And I'm actually having a hard time shorting. There we go. There's two pads on the PCB right above R12 and right next to R9. Let me put the soldering iron down. I can do this. So these two pads right next to R9 and right above R12 are these two copper pads and I just shorted them together with a blob of solder. That, uh, Per the instructions that were were on the auction page for this kit, if you short those together, it should increase the brightness on the kit. Now, I don't know how, how much. Um, there wasn't a lot of detail, and when I tried it on my pocket, I didn't really notice anything. Um, but in this case, I have a console I can compare it to. And I have no idea if that's the Nintendo logo or not. I might have just missed it, but because this is an opaque shell, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm just using my spudger to make sure that that is pressed down nicely. Route the wire up and around the side. But that is going to go onto that touch point right here. If we focus, I'm going to solder that to this point right up here, labeled touch. If you wanted to do um, key combination for brightness control instead, Keep picking this thing up and refocusing my camera. Um, you can use these two pads right here. So for example, if you solder this button, this pad to the select key, and then this butt pad to the down key, if you hold select and then tap down, it'll cycle through the brightness levels. In this case, I am perfectly happy with the uh, touch sensor. So that's what I'm going to go with. I forgot to strip the wire. Okay. And that should be it as far as all the mods I want to make go. Sorry, that was completely out of focus. And because this is an opaque shell, I don't have to pay nearly as much close attention to routing this as I did on my pocket.
that should be that. I'm not having a good time with this. There we go. Probably have to tape the speaker down too because that's going to rattle around. But. There we go. Still technically no soldering required. Ugh. This thing is so hard to fine tune. If you just touch the wheel. Okay, good enough. Close enough. I wish it were at the exact same value, but. Not much I can do about that. Kill these lights. And I don't know, maybe it's brighter. It's hard to say for sure. Either way, I mean, if it's brighter, it's using six milliamps more power, seven milliamps more, and it's not that much brighter. It's still a cool option though. Nice and easy, I think. Okay, let's get this thing together so we can do one last test here. And I've showed you it works, but I haven't showed you how well it works. I was told with the uh, V2 kits that frame dropping issue that I had encountered on my original model was supposedly fixed. And so that was, uh, that was the main appeal of the V2 kit to me. Um, personally, even with that frame dropping issue, it's really not that big of a deal. And it's not really a deal breaker, I think. And given the price of the kit, and that's, you know, the issue itself, so minor given the price of the kit and the fact that you don't even have to do any mods to install the kit. I mean, it's tough to beat this kit in terms of value. I think it's probably the best kit on the market right now. Ooh, that being said, Funny Playing did just release their um, Game Boy Color kit, which is using that IPS screen that they've been putting in Game Boy Advance consoles, except in portrait instead of landscape. That might be a darn good contender. That's like 48 bucks. I, of course, I picked one up. You know me. But I don't think it's shipped yet. And either way, it's still going to be a few weeks before I get it. Nonetheless, until that kit is actually out and in people's hands, I think this kit has the best value. All right. So, let's try it out. I've got here my original V1. And I'm going to turn the volume off because I don't want to listen to that. On two consoles. Of course, this one froze. So, with these two side by side, I, ooh, I think this one is a little bit brighter. It's such a minor amount, though. I don't know. Either way, You tell me, does it look fixed to you? Oops. Let's start those over. Doesn't look fixed to me. Looks like the exact same issue on both consoles. 
Helps if I doesn't don't move them around, does it? Oh, hang on. I forgot I could do this. I'm sorry. Looks like it still has the same issue. Now, for um, transparency's sake, I don't see this issue on Freckle Shack kits or my Taobao kit. So, they didn't fix that issue. Anyway, I think that's about that for this video. Uh, you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, this is the lens that it came with, and this is a lens from Bluish Squirrel, but you know, they both look pretty darn good to me. And I'm, I mean, even still, even with that issue, I'm still super happy with my purchase and my install here. Um, but otherwise, thanks guys for watching and have an excellent night.